Hello and welcome to another one of my Elite Dangerous walkthrough videos. Uh, this one's uh, to do passenger missions in the Robig Robigo system. And with an optimised ship, you can make 100 million an hour. Um, with a starter ship, probably about half of that you know, with a um, T6. So basically in a nutshell, you get yourself a ship, fill it up with passenger cabins, and I'll show you the mix that you need in a minute. Fly out to Robigo, which is quite a long way from the bubble, do the missions, cash in, and that's it. The end. <laughs> but, um, if you want uh, more detail, then uh, to find out how to optimise it all, then uh, carry on watching right so uh, the first thing the type of ship you need now I've done it I've tried three different ships one as a beginner it worked quite well uh, one as more advanced player or more advanced in the game and then finally the optimal si situation so let's just have a look at what what we've got so uh, I'll start from the wrong one the beginner end this ship cost uh three million so you probably need about three and a half million in the bank to do this you need a, some insurance money so as a starter stay in the starter system go to droney help the police in the high resource extraction site shoot a load of the bad guys you'll get about one to two million an hour doing that depending on the RNG. So after a few hours, you'll have enough to buy and fit out this uh, T6. And um, if you want to find out where to get a T6, uh, you could use this system, this eddb.io slash station. And you just type in where you are, type the type of ship you want, T6, and then in here you can type in all the modules you want so you want various uh, passenger cabins which I'll show you in a minute so you can put many modules in the same thing click find stations and it'll list them all up uh, where your nearest ones are so you can use use that to do you know particularly useful for finding the passenger cabins but it's not 100% you might have to go to sort of two or three of the stations on there before you find what you're wanting so Coming back to the, the ship, I'll show you the important things. Right? On whichever ship you use, you need a heatsink launcher. And what that's for is because you're going to be carrying illegal missions and the NPCs will try and scan you. And uh, the missions fail if you get scanned. So um, what you do, if they, if they try and interdict you, you can I always submit, but you can fight, the, fight them in a mini game and if you want, if you know that you're going to win. But otherwise, I just submit, drop a heat sink. Heat sink stops them from being able to get target lock on you so they can't scan you. Uh, boost, uh, get your frame shift drive going and wave them bye bye. And uh, one heat sink launch is enough with three heat sinks. Uh, the most interdictions I've had was three. And mysteriously, that only happened when I brought out this ship as a beginner, you know, in an alter count. Um, in my main account, I've, I think I've had one interdiction in hundreds of trips. So um, that's a bit weird. Anyway, um, so the important things, you want, uh, let's concentrate on the jump range first. The key point is you want 30, at least 30 light years. If you can get it, that does it in two steps with um, you know, two jumps. Uh, one, sorry, one, yeah, two jumps. Um, this one will probably do it in three or four. I can't remember. So it takes you roughly a minute a jump. So in an optimised ship, we're doing it in two jumps. Uh, you'll get 100 million an hour. And um, it takes 12 minutes per, per trip. So... If you do it in two jumps, so an extra jump, each extra jump, it's going to take another two minutes. So you're going to lose roughly 
12.5% of your earnings for each additional jump you have to make. That's all. So even if you've got to do it in four jumps, you're still going to be getting, you know, like 70 million an hour, 60 million an hour, something like that. Uh, in an optimized ship, in this T6, it'd be about half, that, like, two thirds of that because you haven't got so many cabins. Right, so speed is important as much as you can, but you don't want to, you have to bear in mind, you want the ship to be light so that you get a good jump range if you haven't got any engineering. If you've got any engineering, obviously go straight for the frame shift drive to get it as far as possible and make other stuff light. And that's the only things you need, lightness and jump range. So the other important thing is here, you need a uh, hundred and, well, I'd say minimum 125 light years of jump distance. So just keep an eye on that when you're outfitting, um, because otherwise you won't make the return trip with a... Um, you know, with one tank of fuel. You could, of course, change that one there for a fuel tank, and that'll uh, bump up your uh, range by 50%. So there's a lot of ways around it. Now, the other thing you'll notice, no shields. So in a small or medium ship, shields aren't necessary. If you go for a large ship, like an Anaconda, you do need uh, shields. So uh, that's it for this. Oh, the other important thing is the docking computer. Uh, the standard one, don't waste your time with the takeoff one, there's no advantage of that whatsoever, it just gets in the way. So whichever ship you're using, bit small, medium, large, use a docking computer. So that's it, heat sink, docking computer, cabins and um, speed and jump range. Right, now when it comes to the, the cabins, there's normally at least two high paying missions for um, economy passengers, and they, you need at least a size five one. So that's why I've put those in. So then it's a mixture which, of um, business and economy. You know, you might want to try a first class one in there if they do one. Do they do first class? Yeah, that's, yeah they do, don't they? 4C. Um, first class one, you know, might get you an extra option there. You know, you can, you can play about with some of these things, but you want at least two of these economy cabins in the in the class five. So now I'm going to come to Python. So very similar, heat sink, docking computer, optimised for jump range. Uh, again, this one hasn't got any engineering, but I'm assuming if you're going to want to use a Python, you you want to at least do something to the frame shift drive to to get down because it doesn't have a very good jump range. Distance is okay, but it's the, the range in this one. So now you need, as I said, at least two class five um, economy class. So you might, you could try a first class, two business class, two five E economy classes. Would that be better or not? Don't know. Mixtures down here. So, um, I think this is what I've got at the moment, something similar to this, and it seems to work quite well. I'm getting 100 million an hour and generally being able to fill the ship up with reasonably high paying missions. So it's just a question of the mix of missions you get, because some are business, some are first class, some are economy, and they all pay different amounts. Mysteriously, it seems to be the economy ones that pay the most. Uh, so that's the Python. Then is the Anaconda. Uh, whoops, slightly different. You need a shield for the uh, for the Anaconda, and now the the Anaconda can only works out of a different station doing these missions in Robigo. So the, um, the the small medium ships can go to the outpost, um, uh, but the Anaconda has to go to the station. The outpost is called Robico Mines, and the station is called Houses, Houses Port, I think. Um, you'll see it later anyway. Uh, so in this case, with Anaconda, you need this loadout. This works very well. It seems to match the missions exactly. Uh, I can always take all the missions with this one. So this, 
really the ship's bigger than the missions so you spend time waiting for missions sometimes so speed um jump range anything like that's going to help but you'll see here i've gone past the 30 but the next jump would be up to about 60 so if you've got over 60 light years you can do it in one jump but you know whether or not you can get i doubt that you can fill it up with passengers and do that so i've got you know extra stuff over here because that's what's already in the ship before i outfitted for this but you don't need that one one shield one heat sinks all, all you need the shield is because getting out the station they're going to be bumping into a few things so you can't really go shieldless in a anaconda and um you, some of the passengers complain about uh hull damage they don't they don't want it so i don't know whether they don't pay you so much or whether they jump out the ship or whether the mission fails but what the trigger points are i did take some minor damage you know when i um fell into an asteroid belt um but the, nobody seemed to bother about that so i only lost one percent hull but maybe if you get in a battle or something I, I don't know what the rule is exactly about hull damage but so you you know you want a shield anyway you've got space because i guarantee you, you won't fill up the ship with with missions e too easily so using one for the shield one slot for the shield is you know it's, it's something for nothing anyway right so that's the anaconda obviously um that's a bit more expensive but unnecessary really it's just if you've really got anaconda fitted out you could bring it here and it saves you some time i was getting 75 million an hour in the anaconda working from the station with exactly this uh loadout uh right so let's go back to the uh, uh well before we do that uh i'll show you the next thing right oh it's easy to show here so there's three factions and i'm allied with all of them now when you come here you won't be allied with any of them unless you've been here before or done other um missions or whatever for them so you need to bear that in mind it's serious corporation so if you're already allied with them that could be a big help but if you're not or you don't know whether you are or not what you want to do is collect loads of astronomical data on the way here i bought six million in my alt accounts with my beginners my beginners accounts i bought six million of data and i went straight to allied when i handed it in but it didn't show at first so i had to log off and log on and back back on again and then it showed it so um that's what you need to the other ones you've got no choice but to work your way up there's no missions that they offer when you look at the mission board you'll see only this one offers missions none of those it's always naught naught whether that's going to happen with some you know circumstances up here i don't know but i've never seen any missions there so your only way of um repping up is uh to do these passenger missions for them and they don't offer them any at first so you have to take them and then when you hand them in go for rep rather than money until you're you're allied and then you know do what you want after that uh so if you don't know how to get astronomical data i'll just show you quickly you can skip forward if if um you've not done this before but i'm going to talk about road to riches um so you might have seen this i'm just going to change it a minute if you've done mining before or seen things you know like this one shows you where to mine and sell pay nights but the market's gone right down now it's half what it was so you're going to make about now about 100 million hour mining if you're lucky can find right markets maybe a bit less so uh this the passenger mission now has gone to i think gone to the top of the list uh so what you do you click on road to riches and wherever you are presumably somewhere in a in a bubble uh sorry you click on straight line mode here so click on where you are i was in fortuna at the time click on robigo and here is the deviation you can take along the route so you don't want it too much deviation because it finds too many stations uh systems along the way i think i click 20 get routes that's about right 15 i think it was um system along the way so <clears throat> it's taking me to robigo but just showing me the systems if i just deviate a little bit where I can find high value planets. So um, just, um, so from here, from, from when I launched in Fortuna, I navigated to Astriang, and then as soon as I got to Astriang, got my um, 
discovery scanner out and found the terraformable uh, water world, scanned it, and then um, immediately jumped to the next one, Quawazing, whatever it is. And the same, same then. Uh, a thing to bear in mind, though, some of these ones with um, the bigger systems, the planets you want are hidden or they're orbiting gas giants. So, unfortunately, you can't see them until you've scanned the gas giant to get, get it, its signal out of the way. So, um, look to the right of your... If you see gas giants to the on the right-hand side of the, um, the tuning thing down the bottom of your screen, you might want to just deal with those first and then look for the, the planet that you're going to... Um, the high-value ones. So, these, these ones will appear about... What is it, about just after halfway about two thirds of the way across the um, the spectrum at the bottom of your screen. So um, you can tune in straight to them, but if, if you only got like eight or 10 planets in the in a system, you can find them quite quite easily. But um, if it's like 30, you'll probably have to scan the, the gas giants first. Yeah, it's the ones on the right hand side of the screen, the big, big ones. So do that, it took me 45 minutes um, I don't know how many jumps it was to get to uh, Robigo from wherever it was, or even how many light years it was. It say, I'll give you the total. Does it? Yeah, it's, ah, there you go. So it's about 400 light years altogether, the, the whole distance. And um, I got six million on the way. If you if you put a greater deviation, it'll find more systems, give you more to jump to, but. You don't need more than that. You know, once you've done about this many, that's going to get you enough to get you allied. So you can then forget about it and jump, jump to the rest to do the others another time. But it's quite a good tool. You know, like you can get 10, this will get you 10 million an hour just scanning planets if you want to have a go at that. Uh, right, so back to the game. So we've got our data. As soon as you come to the to Robigo, whichever station you come to, probably Robigo Mines, uh, go to the Universal cartographics, hand in your data, get your allied status, log off, log on to make sure it happens, uh, refuel, and then you're ready to start. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Is there... No. Um, so, next thing is uh, the missions themselves. So, what we're looking for is serious atmospherics, and they're, they're towards the bottom. And there's normally a couple, once you're allied, there's normally a couple of about four or five million. So um, let's see what we got this time. There's a three and a bit, three and a bit, three and a bit. So some nice ones there, but no, not, not the big ones. Let's have a look at the next one. If you've got a good memory, it helps because you need to sort of go backwards and forwards between these. So there's a 4.45 million. So I'm going to take that one. And you see it fits in a, a five, class five economy cabin. So these could be class five as well. They're class six. So it's a bit of a bit of a waste, really. So I'm wondering whether they might be better, like first class or business class, and then have the other one of these as um, economy. Uh, is there another one? Hive payment. So there's another one. Three, two. No. There won't be any higher than about just over five. And then normally the lowest is about a million. So there's another four million one. So that looks good. I'll just, just check whether any of these ones. No. So you can see I've got a lot of space in that cabin. It seems a bit of a waste. Right, there's another one, three and a something million there. But what will happen is as all the big cabins are full up, they go down this one. See, that, that's the first class one. Uh, that goes in a. Sorry, that can go in first class or the economy one. I, so I might as well put them in economy in case it's a first class passenger. So start always start at the bottom. Even though it's a bigger cabin, it's the class that counts. There's a three there. I think that one had a load of three million something, didn't it? Uh, another thing is when you you come come here after you just handed in your missions, they might sort of have dried up a bit. And, um, you know, when you look, there's hardly any missions offer. What you can do, just um, close it down, 
go and make yourself a cup of tea, put a kettle on, something like that. Sometimes it doesn't take very long. Sometimes even 30 seconds. It depends when the clock ticks for the mission refresh, I guess. Uh, you come back and mysteriously, you know, you've know, you got your four million ones, whatever. You've got to be careful, though, because in my case, they've probably all disappeared now when it's ticked. Right, so what have we got? Yeah, they do seem to have all gone now. Oh, well. Uh, two million one there. And obviously, as you fill up, they, they go down. So 1.6 there. Be that one. I got one. I've got one left. Yeah, he'll fit in the last one. So I got a full ship this time. Sometimes that one ends up empty. Right. So that's it. So now what we do? This is the speed technique. As soon as you got your missions, launch. Open up your galaxy map. Do them in this sequence. There's your. There'll be your mission marker. Click on it. By that time. Hopefully your ship's got, normally you'd be on the um, outside of the the uh, outpost, it's so ready to go. So, get your landing gear away, boost away, be careful not to boost into anything, because um, you've got no shields. And as soon as your frame shift drive, is, as soon as you clear of mass lock, get your frame shift drive going, then you can steer to the target don't forget interdicted it's been so long now you'll notice that I'm carrying illegal passengers on, on the right hand side above the fuel gate it's just gone because I'm in, uh, jumping at the moment but as soon as I get to the star you'll see it come back again they're illegal in all these systems so that's what the NPCs are after you know it's, a ri it's supposed to be a risk so turn away from the the star and that way, as soon as your FSD is cooled down, you can um, get it charging and then steer towards the, uh, the target. That just saves 500 seconds. So don't, you know, don't go round the star like you do when you're scooping. As soon as you get to uh, this this one, so this the blue marker will be in your nav panel. I steer the wrong way. Yeah. So if you do get interdicted. Um, you have a choice, you know, some people like to fight the interdictions in a mini game. If you win, you've won. Just carry on. Um, but out of practice, because things, it wasn't so easy to win a mini game a long time ago. I just got in the habit of submitting. I've done that, you know, for three years. I've never been killed and I've never been scanned. I used to do the, uh, the old Robigo mission, smuggling missions, where you smuggled stuff back to the bubble and you had like, 10 NPCs after you all the time, you know, every jump they were trying to interdict you. It's a real cat and mouse game. It was really good fun. I wish I'd bring it back. Um, you, in those days, it was like really lucrative at 40 million an hour. So I got really good at figuring out how to uh, get in and out of stations, you know, with illegal stuff. I don't know how many billions I made at it, but it's quite a few. So anyway, I always submit, and because you don't want to be scanned, and they're going to try and scan you, especially if you've got in a slower ship, like the Anaconda, drop a heat sink. That 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 stops them from getting a lock on you, so they can't scan you. And um, then boost, you know, like heat sink, boost, boost again, and by that time your frame shift drive's probably cooled down. Get it going, and then wave goodbye. That's what I always do. So I use heat sinks when I got a, a slow ship 
you know, when they're going to shoot you, some of the other missions, they're shooting you as soon as they've pulled you out if you try and run away. So, right, when that, that reticle gets about half the size of the, the main planet, you'll see Sirius at atmospherics light up like this. So you want to try and keep away from the um, planet a little bit. Sometimes it's a bit behind it. So just, like, curve round to keep it. That way you can go a bit faster. I always push the countdown timer to five seconds and then just steer after that. So I'm at zero throttle at the moment, but it's still charging it. Just takes a couple of seconds. Then you'll see the white target. See it on the radar, right exactly where you want it. Just click on it. Open up the galaxy map. Navigate back to Robigo. And by the time you've done that, the missions were just about complete. There you go. Get your frame shift drive going. And then turn around, avoiding these ships. Because they are quite big. Boost away. And that's it. So all we've got to do is get back without being scanned. So sometimes all the missions, um, none of them have illegal passengers. So you've got nothing to worry about. But it's nothing to worry about anyway. You know, it's so long since I've been interdicted. I don't even think about it now. It looks a bit worrying there on the screen, but just ignore it. But there is some... Um, I know they're going to catch, try and catch me out eventually. Oops, turn away from the planet. From the star, rather. It just allows you to get... You know, it stops your heat ship from um, overheating because you're too close to the star. You know, if you do it too early. Um, you know, so, yeah, what's going to happen is one... I know it happened in the old days of Robigo. One of the NPCs will drop out when you're at the, at the outpost. And it's difficult to hide from them there. Like in the station, you've just got to get through the slot. But at the outpost, until you're actually on the pad, you're vulnerable. So that's when I'll drop a heat sink as well, just while you go to the, uh, the pad. And I'm going to show you how to get to the pad quickly. Just in case that happens. And also it saves vital seconds. So you can do the round trip in exactly 12 minutes. Well, I can, you know, maybe if you're good at things, you'll find out a way to like save another few seconds. And um, while I'm like narrating and thinking of what to say, I'm not fully concentrating on the game. So I have, like, I can just see, oh, I lost a couple of seconds there, I lost a couple of seconds there, that sort of thing. So you can do it like in relaxed mode, but without actually, you know, once you get in a routine. No, I figured out it's just about 12 minutes in this one and 15 minutes using the anaconda from the station but you're carrying more stuff that are missions missions are um... so I'm trying to concentrate at the moment uh, the missions are not worth as much there but you get more of them switch bounced and vital seconds lost Right. One thing to be careful of is that um, the station or the outpost, which side of the, the rings it is, you know, you might find yourself trying to fly through the rings to get to it. So it, it just turn a little bit more edgeways on. It. It's definitely above them up here. So um, if you're unsure, just do that. Just fly towards the edge a little bit to make sure you can see whether it's above or below. Because there was one time I thought I was flying it to it towards it above the rings. And suddenly crash, you know, I've hit the rings. It's not obvious which side of them you are sometimes. Right, as soon as I see million metres like that, I push the throttle a little bit and go to five seconds and I can let go of everything and just steer. Because I've got a spring-loaded throttle, it's not so easy to get that fine control. Right, now there is a, is a bug, so I boost towards it. And then when I go to contacts, request docking. You might see cancel docking there, and you haven't requested it, so you just have to um, cancel it first before requesting it. It's a, it's a bug. So use your thrusters now to get to the, the pad, which way around is from the other side. So this, the light beacon, oops, wrong button. The light beacon beacon is on the, the far side of it. Yeah. 
this ship's got quite good thrusters, luckily, so it's quite easy to manoeuvre. So you want to aim for about that that light there. Whoops, I mean. So I, what I normally do is just come into about there, and then let the docking computer just tilt the ship over, drop it on the pad, and that's the really quick way of doing it. So especially if there's an NPC after you, while you got your heat sink, you know, you drop your heat sink. So using the docking computer, of course, you don't get any damage. If you do it yourself, you always get damage. Well, nearly always, unless you're really clever. Right, so let's just see what we got. Right, once you're on the pad, you're home and dry. I don't think they scan you on the pad anymore like they used to. Right. So, now, if you're at the beginning, you know, don't forget, you'd be allied to these people if you brought that astronomical data with you. So, you can just go, go for the money. But on these ones, you might want to look at these ones. Look, four pluses of reputation for that one there. Only two for that one there. So, that's going to get you ranked up, you know, much more quickly. But as I'm already at I don't need that. So let's see how many we get from this one. Thermic alloys there, that's quite good. Just two on that one, so not really worth it. This one. Just one. So unless you're after cracked industrial firmware, not worth it. So the, the amount of those rewards seem to go with the value here. So look at this one. I mean, we've got there five, five stars. So in the beginning, that would be worth taking because it's going to get you like many of these. It'd be a good investment, and you're still getting two million anyway. So another five stars there. So I, I didn't count that, but it'll be about twenty million, and it takes twelve minutes. And then you're ready to go again fill up and on your way so um if you're going to use a, a like a small or medium ship like the python or the t6 then that's that's it done um otherwise i'm going to show how to use the anaconda as well if you you want to have a go at that um don't you know, i'm not too sure whether it's uh like for the Python, you need engineering. I think you can use the the, uh, the Anaconda would work without engineering. So it's a question of how much you can get in a T6 or the Python without engineering versus the, the Anaconda with or without it. Um, so I think I would I'd be looking at the Python and a bit of engine. By the time you've come out here, I think you get um, you'll be you'll have Elvira unlocked anyway. So all you got to do is run that little mission for her, whatever it is. I can't remember what she, she wants for you to get started. Um, so you've got to do like the 400 light years. First of all, that's fl from, from the start. So that this gets you that. And then um, you run that mission for uh, collect a few bits and pieces. And you should be able to get something to your frame shift drive, which will get you, you know, at least one jump left. So it's probably worth doing that the trouble is it's quite a long way back and a long way to elvira you know you're going to waste an afternoon just doing all that while you could be just earning money at a lower rate you know you have to figure out which you know how much money you want or whether you want to just do it for fun or whatever but uh regarding the interdictions i found that when i came out in the uh in a t6 as a beginner um i got interdicted a lot and then uh, after a bit, none at all. So when I came to make the video about it, um, I was going to make a video just about that. Um, I couldn't get any interdictions at all, so I couldn't show them in a video. I was a bit disappointed about that. And in my other account, or in this account, I'm not getting any interdictions whatsoever, so um, I can't show you that either. So just a word of warning, though, though, if you come out in a T-Sync, you might get a few interdictions at the moment. So just remember, drop the heat sink if you get pulled out, and then boost and get on your way. Or if it's at this um, station, I didn't get any at the, at the station or outpost. They were always, um, they'd pull me out of Super Cruise. Uh, so that's it, uh, really. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the Anaconda. Um, but if you're not going to have a look at that, I'll say I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And um, 
if you've got any questions or suggestions, put them in the comments. I always try and reply. I've had a few good suggestions and, you know, quite often people have, um, you know, a lot of questions. So uh, happy to answer those. So maybe I'll see you in another video. If you want to see the Anaconda, hang on and I'll show you that. Right, so I'm, I've just jumped across to Houses Reach, which is not far from Robigo Mines in the same system. Um, jumped in my Anaconda. Now, this um, station is quite useful because uh, it's got outfitting and a shipyard. So what you can do um, when you want to go, if you've got like a, a high jump range ship, you can fly out in this one and then uh, use the ship transfer to, you know, like you fit, outfit your Anaconda or what, Python or whatever you're going to use, uh, wherever. And then just um, once you get here, call it up. You know, especially if you do it at the end of a session, so it's ready for you in the next session. Um, saves you, like, can, can save you a long trip. And also, if you find you need any spare parts or anything like that, you know, um, it's easier to go backwards and forwards in a ship with high jump range than it is, uh, you know, the actual ship that you're using. Uh, and the same for any stored modules you got, you can you can get them here. There is another station in Sios, which is and and in Southis itself, um, uh, so you can do ship transfer and module transfer there if you need to. They got like all these places got minimal outfitting, um, but I'd be surprised if they got anything you actually need uh, for this this process. Right, so um, you saw the layouts. I'm pretty sure this is it here. Just for a quick reminder. That was the Anaconda. Um, with first class, business class, cabins mainly. And we'll see how well that um, matches. So I accidentally picked up, and in that last session, I don't know whether you noticed, I must have picked up um, the wrong mission. Uh, not to um, uh, sort of this atmospherics. So I had to abandon it. You can see how much rep I lost. It's like two thirds of that, that section. Right, so what have we got? Uh, now these missions, they go up to, the. if you're lucky, you'll get a three million one, but they're mostly, you know, in this sort of range. So this is more straightforward. I just fill them up from the, from the top. So I know that any, probably I'm gonna to have to take just about all the missions that are worth Anything over a million. I'm just looking to see what there is first. Just, there's quite a few missions, but. So I just noticed their, their economy ones. So. You see, look, there's none that I can't take. So if there was any of those big economy ones, uh, they would be showing as not, not able to take. But there aren't any here. So what I normally do is take all the ones of like 1.9 million and above first. No, none from them. It's a shame I always, I always put it down the bottom where you can't get at them. You do, do, do all this scrolling every time. I'm sure some of those missions are gone that were there before already. Done there. Oh, here they are. Right, 
Right, that's it, so I think this fills me up. No, nope, not one. Oh, a bit here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm full now. Right, now a slight difference in this one, because <clears throat> we, you see we've got illegal passengers aboard, we mustn't get scanned, and the cops outside the slot will be looking to scan us on the way out and the way in. Uh, as long as you follow this procedure, they won't bother you. So, same as before, launch, then uh, do your navigating. Same as before. And what happens mysteriously, every bloody ship in the station wants to leave at the same time as you. This is why you need shields. So I'm quite near the front of the station this one. So, what I do, if there's one going out, follow him out. Whoops, I've drifted up a bit too much, I'll have to wait now. So there, here comes another one from behind. So when you see them all queued up in front of you, look for the one whose engines are alight. This ship's drifting all over the place. So as long as you like go out right behind them, you'll be alright. Whoops. That's why you need shields. Right, as soon as you get out, boost. Or if you're lined up with a shot slot nicely, then boost out the slot. And just keep boosting until your frame shift, uh, you're clear of mass lock. I've never been scanned, you know, by boosting out. So once you've got your frame shift going, you can concentrate on steering. Again, with no shields, you've just got to be careful not to uh, bump into anything. You know, the other ships. Just, um, you're okay going back in if you follow my procedure. If you mess about, what happens is other ships will get there first, so it gets a bit awkward, you know, because you have to try and avoid them. But if you if you're like really quick going in, then uh, you're like top of the queue, so you get a you get a nice easy entry entrance. Frameshift drive charging. So this one has a good jump range as well. So I can do it in two jumps. Uh, one thing you might notice, um, so many other ships, I've got no pips and that's uh, that's intentional. Then what I do, we're not going to do any fighting. So as soon as I leave the uh, the pad. Let's do this. I can't concentrate otherwise. Right. As soon as I leave the the pad, where you can uh, operate your pips, I put four to engines and two to systems, and then switch off the power distributor. I've also switched off the cargo hatch because um, I got no use for either of those things. I don't. The, the power distributor doesn't actually switch off just switches off your ability to change the pips. So I don't know how that saves so, so much power, but um, that helps you run cool. If you look, my cruising temperature is 29%. That's quite, that's quite low. And it all helps avoid getting scans because if you're cold, they can't pick you up on the radar so easily. And then when you drop that heat sink, you know, it's, you're going to be cold for longer. So you don't want to be hot uh, when there's a chance of getting scanned. So you might want to think about that in the outfitting, you know, like anything you can do to make the ship run cool, so much the better. Yeah, you, you can ignore every message that comes. There's nothing of interest. Unless you see one that says, right, um, I'm going to interdict you or something like that. Obviously, then you need to be prepared.
But all the other ones, yeah, mission critical messages and that, and whatever. They're just, there's nothing that's any use to you there. So just forget about them, just get on with running the missions. So there it is. This ship's a bit more cumbersome than the, the Python. I'm just staying out a bit again. Shift. And away we go. It's longer because the station's further away from the from the star, so that last leg takes a bit longer to get there, and it takes a little bit longer to load up with the missions. And you can get patches where there's not enough missions to fill up the ship, so you have a choice: you can either run half loaded or Go and make a cup of tea, come back and see whether it's refreshed. That's what I normally do. Give you a chance for a break as well, because it does get a bit intensive sometimes. So, nobody to interdict me. So the critical bit is getting in the station. So what we need to do is line up with the, um, the station before dropping out. I'll show you how to do that. And then it's full speed all the way into the station. Anaconda's not a very fast ship. I think this has got a maximum boost speed of 300. I don't know what its um, normal speed is. It's, the idea is to fly in reasonably fast straight down the axis of the station and that way you won't get scanned because the cops are circulating round the entrance and um, they're looking ahead of them to see who to scan so if you're going straight in that, that direction you don't find it if you use a docking computer they'll probably get you oh the thing's bounced again got switch bounce there I say it's a 75% throttle and it bounced off back to zero. Right, so I'm using the hologram, but also I'm using the actual uh, picture. So you want to come in, instead of in a radial direction, you know, about 30 degrees to the radius. So that's about this angle, I reckon. And you want the um, the station to be tilted just a little bit downwards. So I'm a bit too far across, I reckon. I'm a bit too far up still. Yeah, look good. Just look at the hologram and and see how, oops. You want it about there. It's just slightly down and slightly to the left. So 
see how straight we are. Not bad. That gets you nice and straight. Boost. Do your docking uh, permission. Look, you'll notice it says cancel docking. I haven't asked for anything yet. So you've got to cancel that first, then request docking. That happens at the other place as well. So it's just a question of steering in now. I'm still at full throttle. What's my speed? 250 roughly. And you'll notice all the NPCs queuing up behind me. So I can let uh, reduce the throttle now, but don't let it go to the neutral because otherwise the uh, docking computer will take over. Once you're in a slot, you can then let go and let the docking computer do its thing. But if you do that outside, it'll slam you into the station. And then the police will wonder what the commotion is and they'll come and scan you. So as long as you're first in like that, there's never anybody to block you. You've got a clear, clear run straight in. But if you hang about, you know, you come in from the wrong direction or, or whatever, those NPCs will get there first and you've got to wait for them to get through the slot. And while you're waiting, the police are going to scan you. So that's it in the Anaconda. Uh, all the little tips and tricks that, that I've learned how to smuggle and stuff like that. So you'll see that there's, these missions don't pay as much, but there's more of them because you've got more cabins. But it works out about the same per trip. But um, the trips are... It takes slightly longer because of the station being further from the star. So... Uh, I don't think there's anything else. No. So if you've got any questions about that or the Anaconda, uh, so I mean that's quite a good bit of how to smuggle in, a, in an Anaconda. It's as simple as that. If you do it like that, you don't get scanned. So um, it's dead easy. So anyway, any questions? Put them in the uh, in the comments, and I'll, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in another video. Right, in case you haven't done scanning before, this is how to do it. If you look at the radar, when I'm close to the star, it's a great big uh, blob. So, if you can see the um, orbit lines, like there they are there, just fly a bit above them, away from the star, until it becomes like a smallish blob. Look at it on the radar now. That, that should be small enough. Then open up zero throttle, open up your scanner, do your discovery scanner. You could have done a discovery scanner while um, while you're like flying away from the star. Right, the ones you're looking for are all going to be in this zone here. If you look, I'm looking at the bottom right of the screen. It says Earthlight Worlds. So Rocky Ice Worlds. It's not going to be there. So anything above, I'm just watching it change there. That's where Earth Worlds start, and it goes up to here. Water Worlds. Right, gas giants is um, no good. So it's going to be in this this range here, sort of, where the ones, as you can see, there's two of them there. Now, if you have one up here, the chances are that the greater mass of it is obliterating the signal from the um, the actual water world or Earth-like world you're looking for. So you won't you won't be able to find it until you've scanned the uh, the big one. So I can put that there now. So normally, what I would do, if there's any up here, I would do one or two of them first to clear the way and then the, what that does also it opens up all these lines at the moment we can only see one line and it looks like all the all the planets are along this line so that's fairly straightforward other times it's not so obvious so sometimes it's worth scanning even one of these ones down here like let's just do that one for instance and then zoom back out again and that sets the the like, galactic plane audit line and orbit lines so all the ones you're looking for are going to be along this line so all i need to do now is it looks like put my, I, you know if i put my cursor between those two i'll get it i only get either of them so there's one so now i can put it right in the middle of that one so there's no more those ones are the um the rocky bodies so that's not it There it is. You get the circle. So that's it. I'm now ready to go on to the, the next system. So that's the only thing you've got to look at. Like You could scan everything if you want. But for the rocky things, you only get like a couple of K or something. So you have to ask yourself whether, you know, if time's not important, then do them all. 
you know, it might come in handy later. That's up to you. 